and amen. So let's start. So I hope you're having a great day. And I said, invite somebody, call them, text them. At 25, you can double it. Invite someone, invite one more person. And you have done a good job. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you can see my screen. I believe you can. God bless you. So let me present. And as we go into our topic for today, power to break addictions and limitations. You know, um, in life, there are many things that affect a man. There are many things, many, many things. I mean, I'm referring to man. I'm talking about woman too as well. There are many things. Um, part of those things that affect men and women are invisible. See, the invisible things are more real than you think. The invisible, that's why the Bible says the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The things that we see, even the visible word we see is powered by invisible things. <laughs> the things that we see, the things that are, are, are happening are powered by an invisible realm. Have you noticed that over the years, things are denigrating. Have you noticed that standards are going down? Standard, you see, you just notice what people hold in high esteem is rubbish now. Like, let's talk about marriage. Let's talk about, about um, you know, the way things are going on in the world. Growing up, and I grew up here, you will not see man participating in women's sports. You will not. But now, it's a normal thing. So there are many things that are going, but you are seeing it from, why is this happening? But there is a spirit realm where it has already been manufactured, where it has been engineered before you see the manifestation in the physical. So that's why the spiritual determines the physical. In every instance that you see, somebody said they are sick. Let me tell you the truth. The doctor can diagnose and say maybe it's um, cancer, it's diabetes, but in the spirit realm, it's, it might be an arrow. It might be an attack. It might. It is. What say is it might be. It is. It is. It's an attack. But in the physical realm, they give a name to it. Oh, um, 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 high blood pressure. But in the spirit realm, there's an engineering that produced what you are seeing in the physical. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So in people's lives, they battle what I call limitation. And limitation is very disastrous. Because sometimes, the person that is under limitation may not know that they are limited. So I declare and declare one more time, as we have prayed, every limitation, every addiction is destroyed over our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I believe you can see my screen. If not, I will reshare it again. Let me reshare it. It looks like it's, it's frozen here. Let me just reshare the screen so that you can see it very well. I'll just share my desktop and go from there. So as I said earlier, that every limitation is destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thumbs up. I, I believe you can see the screen so you can keep moving. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. All right. Let's keep going because of time. So we are looking at limitations. And what is limitation? How do you define limitation? What is limitation? There are many ways to define limitation. And we are looking at it from here. It says in the dictionary term, it's an act of limiting or controlling something. It's an act of limiting or controlling something. A state of being limited. Something that limits, such as a restraint. When you put a dog on a leash, you are saying that the dog cannot go past the rope or the leash on the, nox, on the dog's neck. That's a limit. So in most cases, most people that are under limitation, the, en the enemy puts a boundary that they cannot go beyond. The enemy puts a boundary that they cannot advance towards. And I pray that God himself will deliver all of us from limitations in Jesus' name. Amen. A limit or bound such as arms limitation, you know, a limiting condition, something that controls a person. You get the point. Now let's keep going. Now, why you define limit? Limit is a peg, an hindrance, a barrier. You know, like, you know, have you seen uh, this example, like people that um, use elephants, what you call those people that use elephants for like shows? I've got what they call their names. Um, they, they go on shows and they, sh they use elephants. Say it again? Okay. Whatever she said. <laughs> Let's keep going. Circus. A circus. Yes. So what they do is that the elephant, they tie the elephant down. The elephant can move beyond where they put it. But when the elephant is small, they will tie it to a place and the elephant will just move in around that area, around that area. And the elephant gets used to that area. To the point that when they remove the leash from the elephant, the elephant will not go beyond that certain area. So a limit can be peg, entrance, or barrier. 
May God help us in Jesus' name. If you are driving, there's something called speed limit. If they say you're 70 miles per hour, your car can go beyond 70 miles per hour now. Your car, but they are saying that you can't go beyond a certain threshold. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So a limit are things that does not allow you to maximize your potential. That is what is called limit. That's why Jeremiah 4 verse 3 says, break up your fallow ground. Break up those things that are limiting you. May God remove limitations from our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. You can read it quickly because of time. You can see here that a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband, is dead like he didn't, <laughs> like he didn't know. <laughs> and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Because you are born again does not mean that some limitations are not there. Amen. See, when we become born again or saved, God removes the old man. That old man, the flesh, and he does that. He removes the heart of sin and replaces it with his own life. But the thing is that there are some things that are tied to our bloodlines or tied to our, our location that also is removed. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. This prophet was under Elisha. Elisha was an anointed man of God, but he was broke. A man of God that could command things to happen, that could part the Red Sea. A man of God that had great things with him, but he did not pass down to the prophet. This prophet was very genuine, but sometimes he was genuinely wrong. He was owing, and he died in poverty and penury. He was a genuine man of God that did not understand the concept of prosperity. That's it. That prophet was a man that did great things, that was very fervent, that was faithful, and sometimes faithfully wrong. I mean, he was under a man of God that could have spoken a word to him and would be prosperous. Somehow, he didn't connect to that area in terms of Elisha as his prophet. Now that he's dead, the wife of the prophet came and said, hey, this man is dead, and people are trying to, I mean, sell the children as slaves. Verse 2, so Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Hey! When God wants to bless you, he blesses you with what you have. See, you can't manufacture what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. We went back to when Elijah came to the widow of Zarephath. It was the meal that she had that bought her more life, that saved her from famine. God will not require from you what you don't have or what you cannot give. He said, what do you have in your house? Somebody will think that this man will do fundraiser. Am I right? Or give a statement at church or in the synagogue and say, hey, one of our prophets has died and the children are being sold, are, want to be sold as slaves. Can we give offering so that they will not be sold as slaves? That was the, what somebody would think. Or we write letters to other prophets and say, hey, one of your prophets has been, has, is dead though. Please give some money. He said, what do you have in your house? I decree and declare that God will give us supernatural wisdom. Say aloud, loud amen. Pray this prayer and say, my father, my father, I take supernatural wisdom. Pray. Say it in 30 seconds. My father, my father, I take supernatural wisdom, supernatural insight in Jesus' name. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. He said, your servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it all, pour it all into those vessels and set aside the full ones. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When God wants to bless you and take you out of limitation, he will give an instruction. When God wants to destroy limitation in your life, what will he do? He will give you an instruction. When you pray, say, God, what do I need to do? May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. When God wants to bring about a change, when God wants to bless you, he sends an instruction. It is up to you to follow the instruction. He said, go, borrow vessels, borrow not a few. He said, lock the door. So the amount of vessels that they bring or that they borrow 
is going to be, is a determinant of the amount of money that we get. May God help us in Jesus' name. So when God wants to move you to a higher position, when God wants to destroy limitation in your life, he will give you an instruction. May God bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. A man of God said that God has him to give his two cars. As I said, when God wants to shoot your levy, what will he do? He gives an instruction. And he said, God, but uh, normally, if I have two cars, I can give one. God said, give the two cars. I am telling you today, the man does not have to pray for a car. He has private jet. He has helicopter. When God wants to bless you, he will give you an instruction. What is the instruction that God has given you? As Kenneth Copeland always says, if you want God to instruct you, go back to the last instruction that he gave you. Have you followed through on the last instruction that God has given you? May God help us in Jesus' name. Personally, I made up my mind that every day I will pray a certain amount of prayers. There are certain amount of hours of prayer I must pray every day, unfailingly. Because of what? Instruction. You get the point? When God wants to change your levels, he gives you strategy. See, when you pray, ask God for strategy. Ask God for instruction. Many people are praying and miss. You are praying, you are fasting. You are fasting and miss. You are praying and miss because you are not asking God for instruction. Hey, God will bless you in Jesus' name. I don't give other examples, but I'm, I'm keeping it inside. Do you know, even with wealth, God gives instruction. Oh, I'll just move it on. You want to be wealthy? Ask God for instruction. There are some instructions that God has given me. I'm praying that God will help me to follow through. When God gives you instruction, it shifts your level. Amen. Let's keep it moving because of time. What are different types of limitations? See, it is not God's will for you to be limited. Let me tell you something about limitation. It's an attack on destiny. Limitation is an attack on destiny. See, what the enemy tries to do is that he tries to shoot an arrow of delay. See, delay makes things hard. Delay makes men compromise. Delay makes the heart weary. Delay makes people not to trust God. So when the enemy wants to attack somebody's destiny, he puts delay and limitation in their lives. Why? He knows that if he can hold them back, sometimes they become a shell of themselves. So when the enemy wants to attack somebody's destiny, he shoots an arrow of delay. He shoots an arrow of what? Limitation. You can, this person cannot go beyond this boundary. And let me tell you something. Limitation sometimes can be ancestral. From this part of town, from this village, from this city, people don't go beyond this financial threshold. People don't go beyond this spiritual threshold. May God destroy every limitation in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Limitation is an attack on destiny. Sir, ma. For you to maximize potential, you have to be limitless. God is limitless. There cannot be a peg on your progress. They, see, your destiny cannot be pegged. You are beyond it. God, See, when God created you, he put on you glory. Glory. There's glory on you. Glory is the presence of God. Glory is the fullness of the wealth of God. Glory is the presence of God. That's glory. So when the enemy shoots limitation at a man, he is trying to attack the person's glory. Every limitation is destroyed in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's just look at the first part. Act limitations come. There's spiritual limitation. There's what you call spiritual limitation. Isaiah 6 verse 1. It says when King Uzziah died, that's when I saw the Lord. Isaiah has been a prophet. If you look at, have you noticed that if you read the book of Isaiah, between Isaiah chapter 1 to 5, who quotes Isaiah chapter 1 to 5? Maybe some people. Now, between Isaiah chapter 7 forward, there are many prophecies there that you see. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Where is that? Isaiah. He's going to say, no weapon from against you shall prosper. And then, in the book of Isaiah. Ah, sir, Amma, do you have anything to quote in the book of Isaiah? Thus said the Lord to the king Cyrus, who hand, whose hands are holding, to subdue nations before him. He said, I will, I will break the gates of brass. And the gate of iron. It's in Isaiah. But before Isaiah could see this prophecy, somebody had to die. 
there is spiritual limitation. Isaiah was already a prophet, but somebody had to die for Isaiah to see the Lord, for Isaiah's prophecy, for his calling to be cemented. So I declare and declare over my life and your life, those that need to die will die. So that every limit is destroyed in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. For those that need to die, say it. Someone is scared to say amen. Me, I'm not scared. Though. For those that need to die, so that my progress, so that my destiny will manifest, they will die in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So there is spiritual limitation. There's also mental limitation. Numbers 13. Let's look at it quickly. So we are not just quoting things. Open the book of Numbers chapter 13. I'm sorry that I'm rushing. Because of time. <laughs> so you can do this in justice. Numbers chapter 13. I hope you are being blessed. Numbers 13, 10 and 12. Numbers 13, chapter 10. And the tribe of Zebulon, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. Gadiel, so if you look at that, Numbers 13, they sent people, they sent a representative from each tribe to go and check out the promised land. They came back, they say, hey, we are like grasshoppers. Mental limitation. Sometimes it's you that is limiting yourself. Oh. Sometimes it is you that is what? Limiting yourself. Let me give you a personal example. We are at work. And anytime I'm at work, when people are talking, when they have meetings, I'm very quiet. I don't say, normally if you observe me, I don't say a word. When I'm sitting down, I'm not talking. I'm just quiet. I listen. I will soak things in. So they were talking about things that is concerning my own department. And I didn't say a word. And my supervisor was like, yo, he's pinged me. In the business. He said, talk now. <laughs> because in my mind, I feel like the professionals are talking. Let me hear what they have to say. And I realized that mentally, I put myself in a position where like, I just listen to people and I don't contribute. That's in the workplace. So. I, I said changing it. I said, you know what, from now on, when they are talking, I will listen and also input something. And ask the only people for wisdom what to say. Many people limit themselves mentally. They think they are not qualified. They think they don't deserve it. They think that if it happens to others, it's not supposed to happen to them. In my own family, we've not seen, we have never been rich before. You can be the first person. You can be the first person in your family to break barriers and boundaries. You can be the first person in your family to marry early. You can be the first person in your family to do great things. God can do it in your life. People put mental limitations on themselves. And sometimes it's from their culture. It's from their background. Many times the way you act is based on your background. The way you talk, the way you behave, the way you think is from your background. The way I'm talking to you now, the way you are receiving it is your mentality. Your mentality is soaking what I'm telling you. God will help us in Jesus' name. There is mental limitation. Look at the book of Psalm 78 verse 41. Psalm 78 verse 41 on the screen. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the only one of Israel, the only one of Israel. They tempted God. See, there was a time in my life, ah, if you met me maybe some years ago, I used to be very mentally, I, I was strong, but, well, I won't say I was weak. <laughs> mentally, sometimes, you know, I would just be acting, you know, until one day, God had to wake me up. Ladies and gentlemen, where you are right now is a function of your mentality. God will help us in Jesus' name. Where you will be in the future is also a function of what? Your mentality. Your mental fortitude must be strong. Bible says that if a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The way you think, that's what we manifest. Let me tell you. Do you know if you believe that you buy a house without mortgage, you, it is very possible. See, your thinking determines what comes to you. Your thinking pattern is also a prayer point to God. When you are thinking, as you think, that's what God is seeing. Your God is seeing your thinking, your mentality. God will remove limitations from our lives in Jesus' name. Same children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, they were complaining. We are not eating onions. We are not eating cucumbers. We are missing slavery are you are you are you well they in slavery for 430 years god delivered them but their mind was still in egypt god will give us understanding in jesus name there are many people that you have moved to the u.s we have moved to another country but your mind is still in your home in your village <laughs> hey 
Hey, God will help us in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. Amen. You go and buy something, you start converting it. Eh? This one is... <laughs> Oh, because of time, I can't go into this about this is, man. Eh? This in, in, in my country is a million. I'm spending... Oh, no. come, come on, dog. Go with that mentality in Jesus' name. Amen. Sir, if you can work on anything in your life, apart from your spiritual growth, work on your mental growth. Sir, nobody can steal what you have developed. Nobody can steal your mental... See, your mentality is something you pass down to your children. If your mentality is weak, they will see it. Go will help us in Jesus' name. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say it. Say it one more time. I have the mind of Christ. Post it on the chat. I have the mind of Christ. Say it one more time. I have the mind of Christ. Romans 12, 2. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let's keep going. Financial limitation. As I've said, some people, they can't go beyond the threshold financially. And every financial limitation God will destroy in Jesus' name. Marital limitation. Let's keep going because of time. Amen and amen. Now, limitation can also be as a result of fear. Oh, 2 Timothy 1.7 says that we should not be, um, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. And fear can come as a result of what you see, what you hear. So you have to guard your heart. Hmm. Okay, I was watching, a, I, like, I like the news. I, I I I love news. I, I I mean I soak it in. I'm very aware of what's going on. And somebody was saying that maybe their child died or something. And they will say, hey, you know, see, you have to be careful what you hear, what you see. It can determine a lot. During COVID, I had to switch off from the news because when you watch news, you say two million people died today. You, you and we're all in COVID now. Five hundred thousand people died in the city. You're like what the heck? And they will put a ticker counter for those that watch CNN. You remember? They put a ticker of like people that have died on the side. Under people died today. No, 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 no. I, I can't go into that rubbish. No, no, no. Forgive me. <laughs> God has not given you and me the spirit of fear. You don't have the spirit of fear. Everyone on praying under the spirit of fear, either what the enemy is feeding you in your mind through dreams. Anything that is you that is making you afraid, I command the fire of God to cast that demonic spirit out in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. Fear is the door that, that, you know, fear opens the door to the other side. See, there is faith and there is fear. When you have faith, and the Bible says in the book of Romans, I mean, Mark 11, it says, have faith in God. Mark 11, 23, 25. Have faith in God, verse 22. Have faith in God. When you don't have faith in God, you are opening the door to fear. And fear opens the door to sickness. Some people are not sick. Let me tell you. But when they start being afraid, they open the door to that sickness they are afraid of. May God help us in Jesus' name. Make up your mind not to live in fear. God has to start a business. Start the business without being afraid. If you fail, you are failing forward. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So what is the solution to limitations? What are the solutions to limitations? You need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. And I declare and declare that God will bring breakthrough to you in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. Luke 4, 18. God came to proclaim freedom to prisoners and to set the captives free. That's Luke 4, 18. He came to set the captives free. And I put it that when God restores, he gives you more than what you have lost. I realize that when you are, you know, ready for God to move in your life, when you are ready for God to move, when God is ready to move in your life, things will look as if it's not working. But when God decides to work in your life, nothing can stop it from working. May God help us in Jesus' name. When God restores, he gives you way more than what you have lost. God says, I will restore to you the years that the locust, the cancan, the caterpillar has eaten. God said he will restore. And I pray that God will restore yes to you in Jesus' name. Let me give an example. I'll give you a personal example. So that it's not as if I'm talking, I've, I've, I've been in your shoes. There was a time I was looking for a job. I was jobless for maybe, if, if not almost two or three. Hey! I don't wish joblessness on my enemies. Well, some enemies, maybe they need it. <laughs> some enemies need it. But you get the point. 
I was jobless. Oh God. Nothing sucks that I, I was in a place where my mind balance was just by the grace of God. I had no, no confidence. No, <laughs> no confidence. No, I, yay, God. Oh, you know, when you're doing interview and if it doesn't work, you're like, okay, well, I knew it wasn't going to work anyways. You get the point. But when God decides to turn the captivity of, put your name there, of Uluwashi Otekobo, we were like them that dreamed. I decree and declare those that need the breakthrough. Before tomorrow morning, you will get your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. God will bring breakthrough to you. Say loud, amen. God will restore all that you have lost. Amen. God will bring breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. God will break every resistance over your life. In the name of Jesus. I say to man that we should pray in the next one minute. Pray and say, in the name of Jesus, my father, my father, any place where I need breakthrough, let it your breakthrough manifest in my life. Pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need to pray. I decree and declare breakthrough. Oh, over this job, breakthrough. Over my marriage, breakthrough. Over my destiny, breakthrough. Over PPC, breakthrough. You have 30 more seconds. Father, I decree and declare breakthrough. So shall it be in Jesus' name. And for those that are working and it's not the job that you desire, because after a while, I went to go and get a job that I did not like. I mean, I had to put food on the table. I went to get a job that I did not like. For those that are working jobs that they don't like, God will give you your dream job. Say that, amen. God will give you beyond, Ephesians 3.20, He will give you beyond your expectations, exceedingly beyond your expectations. In the name of Jesus, those believing God for marriages, God will settle you. God will bring your spouse. Ephesians 3.20 men and women, not stupid men, not ridiculous women. In the name of Jesus, God will bring you... Oh, amen. Let's go because of time. I'm too passionate about this. What's the thing you need to do? When you're believing God to destroy limitation, you need to pray. And I'll say, add fasting to it. Ladies and gentlemen, look at First Chronicles 4.10. Jabez was, was born in sorrow. His mother, his father gave birth to him in sorrow. Or his mother gave it to him in sorrow. And he says, and Jabez prayed and said, oh my father, change my name. Let's look at it quickly. Let's look at that scripture. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. First Chronicles 4, verse 10. Quickly. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. First Chronicles 4, verse 10. And he says, and Jabez called. Let's start from verse 9. Verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, than his siblings, than his family, than his parents. But there was somebody in his bloodline. His mother called his name, Jabez, saying, I bear him with sorrow. Maybe the, mother, the father ran away. I don't know. Maybe she had a very hard time during the pregnancy. And she named him with a curse and called his name Jabez. Verse 10, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, as we will do tonight, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, my territory, and that thy hand might be with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. I decree and declare that your prayers will be answered. Say loud, Amen. Every resistance to answered prayers, God will remove it in Jesus' name. Any evil force resisting answers to your prayers, may God destroy in Jesus' name. May the God of all glory send answers to every prayer that you pray in Jesus' name. Answers to limitations come with fervent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer, put your name there, of Victor avails much. The fervent, the effectual fervent prayer, praying without ceasing, brings about breaking of limitation. I will add one more thing to it. How do you destroy limitation? Be excellent. Excellence destroys limitation. When you are excellent, you keep improving. There are many people that are not excellent. Excellence in output. Excellence in presentation. Excellence in what you do. Excellence in the work of your hand. Be excellent. And as PPC, as, as a tribe, as we are, God has called me and you to be excellent. So, man, if I'm presenting something to you, I want you to see excellence in presentation, excellence in production, excellence in the points that are being made, 
excellence in utterance by the grace and the spirit of God. Be excellent. When you are excellent, you cannot be mediocre. And when you are not mediocre, you cannot be limited. Amen. Be excellent. Improve on yourself. Stretch yourself. Grow yourself. Read yourself out of your, your present situation. Pray yourself out of your present situation. Be excellent. Adopt a spirit of excellence. Sir, there must be a difference between you and your colleague. There must be a difference in presentation, in outcome, in, in, in results. God will put on us, like Daniel, the spirit of excellence in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that God will put on you and me excellence. How do you break out of limitation? Number three is not here. Sow seed. Sow on good ground. Let me tell you, blood must be dripping from the altar. You know, when Cain and Abel gave a sacrifice, God did not count Cain's sacrifice because he did not come from a place of, I mean, he was rubbish. He did not give his best. But Abel gave the best, the best. And God said, I, I take your sacrifice. And Cain became jealous. If you want people to envy you and not pity you, sow seed, give. I mentioned before, even if you are comfortable, you are able to pay the bills, you can be better. I'm talking to you. You can pay the bills, your, your, you have everything. Let me tell you, your bank account can be better. Your life can be better. Ladies and gentlemen, don't limit yourself. If you are making $1,000 a month, you can make $10,000 a month. You can be better. I'm talking to myself too. You can be better. Don't limit yourself. Oh, I'm more comfortable. My children are okay. Ah, you can be better. You can, you can become a, a, a spiritual juggernaut. A, a spiritual business tycoon. Let's keep it moving because of time. Let's talk about addiction. Addiction. And I didn't put that much there because addictions are very real. Somebody can put the definition of addiction in the, in the page. Addiction are things that you cannot control. Addiction. And the Bible says that, you know, God has come to break chains and destroy yokes in our lives. And I realized that when the enemy wants to catch a young man, he throws addiction at that person. Have you noticed that most people that are addicted in their old age, they started from when they were young. Weed, cigarettes, alcohol, pornography, masturbation. It did not start from when they were old. The enemy captures that person when that person is young. That's why you must pray for yourself and pray for your children. That they will not be addicted to negative rubbish. People that exhibit any behavior that is negative, every addictive behavior in their old age is started from when they were young. So the enemy tries to catch people when they are young. He sends foul spirits to people when they are young. People that started having sex early, premarital sex, it is that when they were, when they were old. It's not when they were young. When people hear negative views, when people are, are put in places of compromise, it started from when they were young. People that started lying and are habitual liars, it started from when they were young. People that were stealing, did they start stealing when they were old? It started from what? Start stealing candy start, and graduate to a bigger thing. May God help us in Jesus' name. Addiction is anything that you cannot control. And sometimes it can be this, your phone. Eh? You can't put it down. You can't pray without looking at it. We are talking to ourselves now. <laughs> you can't pray for 30 minutes without looking at something. You, you are even praying, you're not looking at uh, Instagram. <laughs> oh, Father, we thank you. Ah, that's 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 nonsensical. May God help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Sorry if I'm being blunt. Addition can also be social media, your phone. It can be your children. Some people they've made their children their God. Go help us in Jesus' name. So we can be their spouse. Me and my siblings, we know somebody. 2006, we went to, we, my parents traveled to Houston, I remember. They traveled to Houston, Texas. In 2006 2005, I don't remember. So we, we stayed with somebody, somewhere in Metro Atlanta. We stayed with them. They, my parents put us there. Before I was, hey, my whole, everything, my husband, my whole, hey, I'm like, oh God, oh Lord, oh Lord. My, my siblings know who I'm talking about. My husband, my everything, my husband. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying you don't carry the matter of your spouse on your head. But it can be an addiction. I feel that God will help us in Jesus' name. Please, I'm not saying you don't love your spouse, so please don't quote me wrong. I'm saying that anything you honor above God, anything you cannot drop, it can be Netflix. We are talking to ourselves. It can be what? An addiction. It can be YouTube. Oh, God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 
I just named some, some types of addiction, substance abuse. It can be prescription drugs, um, you know, um, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, substance abuse, weed, meth, marijuana, porn, pornography, alcohol. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And God has come to set us free. Let's go and look at Psalm 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. And we'll round off here because I want us to pray. Psalms 50, verse 15. Psalms 50, verse 15. And it says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. See, the thing with pornography, the thing with substance abuse is that it thrives in secrecy. It thrives in, 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 in secrecy. I've said this before. You know, there was a Christian convention. And this Christian convention, they booked a hotel. You heard the story before. They booked a hotel. So a lot of people that were staying in that conference or in that hotel that week were Christians. They were going for a convention. And that week, the hotel said that people watch more pornography that week than any other time. <laughs> Literally, the convention goers were, were culprits in that area. When you have an addiction, you have to expose it to the light. Anything that tries in darkness will continue to prosper. That's why the Bible says that he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. See, when you cover your sin, you are giving it more life. When you expose it, you have actually solved 50% of your problem. If you are under an addiction, you have to expose yourself. See, don't bother or worry about what people think about you. What is more important is what does God think about me? If you are still looking at porn on the side, even if you are looking at it once in, once in a blue moon, you need deliverance. And I pray that God will deliver you in Jesus' name. If you are still adhered to alcohol, smoking weed, doing things that are not of God, I pray that God will send deliverance in Jesus' name. God is able to save to the uttermost. And I decree and declare that God will destroy limitations. God will destroy addictions in my life and your life in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. Amen. When I was preparing this message, God said that we should pray. So I'm rushing so that we can pray. Spend the last three minutes praying. We are going to pray. So we are going to admit ourselves. We can admit ourselves and pray. As I've said before, if you are under an addiction, talk to a mentor. You can even talk to me. I know there are many people that are under me by the grace of God that are there to pornography. They come and talk to me and say, hey, bros, be checking on me. And I do my best to check on them and pray with them. There's no condemnation to them in Christ Jesus. God has delivered us from all these sins. So God can deliver you from addiction, from of abuse, from evil. See, if you keep covering it, it will keep prospering. If you expose it to the light, you have received your deliverance. And I pray that God will deliver you and me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We are going to pray the first prayer. And we are going to pray from number three, Isaiah 43, 19. We are going to pray and say, my father, my father. Let's look at number three. Every old structure that wants to limit my destiny, from springing forth. I declare and declare your fire will consume me. Let's pray that prayer. Look at number three. My father, my father, I come to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Every old structure, every ancestral spirit, every limiting spirit that is trying to limit my destiny from springing forth, let your fire be with them in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, pray. Arasanda, dada, omit yourself. Shaka pande, de, de, de. Lapa kopanda, rasanda. Akada, da, da, da. Mana and Dede, in the name of Jesus, every old structure, every limitation, every divination, limiting my destiny from springing forth, from my father's side, from my mother's side, anything that I have done in the past, let your fire destroy them. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we are Say loud, amen. Say loud, amen. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting gates. Let's look at ye everlasting doors. And let the king of glory come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Say, my father, my father. Every gate that has been shut against my destiny. Every closed heaven. I command it to open up in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every closed gate. Every closed heaven. Every closed Open up in Jesus' name. Every closed gate. I'm here to mention it. Against my, my career. Against my business. Against my marriage. Against me having children. Open up in Jesus' name. I declare and declare who the son set free. is free indeed. I command every gate to open up. In Jesus' name we are prayed. 
Amen. Pray this prayer. I say, my father, my father, mm -hmm. I take the key to open every closed door. Pray. The key to open every closed door. That strategy I need. I take that key in Jesus' name. Pray. My father, my father, every closed door, every closed gate, I take the key to open it. Either the key of praise and worship, the key of sowing seed, the key that you will give me. I take that key. The key to forgive those that have offended me. I take that key in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare, declare that key that opens gates, I take the key. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Say loud, amen. amen. People are trusting the wrong people. The people that you are trusting, some of them are the people that are attacking you. I was reading the Bible, and David was saying that it is my people, those that we eat together, those are the ones that are attacking me. He said, my enemies are those. It's not people that... He, he said, even if it was people outside, he said, I know. He said, the people that are attacking me. I was reading it the other day. I think it's maybe Isaiah 50 or so. He said, that the people that we eat together and we take good counsel together. Say, my father, mm -hmm. father, those that are causing me problems, those that are attacking me, expose them and destroy them. Pray that prayer. Expose mm -hmm. the people who are in my life. Pray. Expose mm -hmm. them and destroy them. Pray that prayer. I shaka pan de de de. Trust of my heart, I share my Father, family, that are comporting themselves together, any demons open, expose them and destroy them in Jesus' name. Over my life, that are attacking me, that I trust them and they are attacking me, let your fire expose them and destroy them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. There's somebody here. You are believing God for financial breakthrough. You are mm. believing God, and that door has been closed for a while. God is saying to you and me that that door will open in Jesus' name. I'm hearing Amen. it. Myself. You have been believing God for financial breakthrough, and it's like mm. an impossible door to open. That impossible door, God will open it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Seven days of, pray, of, 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 of praise and worship. Seven days. Seven days. And it's an instruction for everybody because what God says to one, He says to all. Seven days of consistent praise. Let me tell you, someone can pray and pray and pray and not get answers to their prayer. But you can't praise mm. and praise and praise and not get answers. No, it's impossible. See, you can praise your way out of your situation. So we are going to praise God in the next 30 seconds. And from now, for the next seven days, we are starting the new month. Spend at least one hour praising God. Spend at least what? One hour what? Praising wow. God. Let's now, in the next 30 seconds, begin to praise God. I say, Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. Father, I worship you. Father, I glory. You. And thank you. Thank you. Because I've got the limitation has been broken. Father, I thank you because I'm financially dependent. Thank you because I'm getting married this year. Father, I thank you because I have that. Begin to thank him. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I want to apologize for speaking fast and for going really fast. Sorry. I was trying to cover a lot. And I pray that. Before this time next week, you will hear testimonies. We will hear testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Um, let's just, let's, 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 before we even um start preparing to leave PPC, I want us to, somebody just, you know, put your hand on your head and just say, I am the first participant. I, I am the first partaker out of these blessings, out of, out of the word that has gone forth. That's a confession. That's a declaration. Um, one thing I'm realizing is not to just listen to the word, but to, but to, for the word to bear fruit in my life. It must show that I've been